Okay, um, just very quickly, uh, Grow the Glens, we're based here in Gushendal, just the North Antrim coast. Um, nice pretty picture there of the area. Um, Grow the Glens sort of was set up with an economic focus. It's a strong community um, background in this area, both in terms of social, cultural, sporting. Can I just mention we are as of this weekend, the Ulster Hurling Champions. Um, so I'll just, you do are. The, I'll just do the plug for that there. So yeah, great vibrant community. However, a community that where there are limited opportunities for employment. And I think Deirdre mentioned earlier, the, the employment that we do have, most people travel. If they're lucky to Ballymena, 20 miles away. If they're unlucky, uh, they're traveling to Belfast. And if they're very unlucky, they're in London, Dublin, New York, or Berlin. So our vision was to make the place a better place to live, better place to work. And a specific project that we were involved with um, with COF, with the Community Ownership Fund, was the regeneration of the, the former police station into a community asset. Police station closed about seven, eight years ago and had lain derelict since. It wasn't an easy building to develop, obviously, because shall we say it was redeveloped in the uh, 1970s a couple of times. And so when it was rebuilt, it uh, was a concrete bunker. So in many ways, that dictated some of our, uh, one of, that was one of our advantages and problems. No one else wanted it. It was falling derelict. We saw a real need in our community for it. Um, and, you know, our vision is about, is about integrity and it's about place. I mean, we're not simply about putting bums on seats. We see this as a, as a much wider project. And if I can just get this to go on to the next one. There we go. Uh, a couple of pictures there. The first one is, uh, you can see, is what the, the police station used to be. Um, big communication mask, unfortunately, still there. Um, the station itself was structurally very sound, damp and dark, but um, it's undergone quite a transformation. There was a big building in the back as well. We've taken away most of that. And what we've got now is um that's actually not the most up-to-date picture um i think if i go on to the next one you'll see there we've actually uh, much better uh it's sitting just on the edge of the village center it's a great location right on the coast road um and we've now converted it so there's about seven eight offices meeting space kitchen uh, and it's actually building wise turned out really well just again, to follow up a lot of the stuff that Derby said, you know, it'll, we had to align that with all the government policies, the council policies, Cushendall Village Plan, um, sustainability, very important to us. Um, and we also feel that what we've done can be done in a lot of other areas. And incidentally, we've been contacted by several other organisations who in particular are developing police stations. And I think we have been very lucky um, and I think one of the things that groups should think about is, does your group have the skill set to undertake a project and to manage a project? Um, we had an accountant, an architect, um, a senior construction manager, someone like myself with experience in funding, a guy very good at marketing, and two or three community people. And I think you need that because otherwise it's a little more difficult um, because uh COF fund, I must to be honest, I found it very easy to work with. Um, but that's even easy to work with still involves weeks of work. And every single member is a is a volunteer. We don't have any full-time or even part-time staff. Uh, maybe just mention that at the end because that's great, but uh, it does bring its own problems. Um, so we've created a, a very high quality digital hub. We deliberately took it. As far as our budget would allow up market, good quality furniture, good quality chairs, bright colours, um, good facilities all around, top class broadband. Um, so it's we really pushed the boat out there. COF is only one of our funders. We also got money from communities. We also got great support from our, our local council. And there's also some local fundraising we did ourselves. And we worked very closely with DTNI and indeed with, with Derby on occasions. Um, sorry, on occasions, Derby, quite intensively at times. So <laughs> thank you very much for that. So that's where we were. In terms of now that we're up and running, I think one of the important things to say is that um, you've got to get it right at the start. If I simply talked about what we're doing now, that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't done the initial stuff, the survey work, uh, make sure we've got the community support. We did a Green Book economic appraisal. 
Um, we worked with a range of funders. We're very highly networked. The, the members of our group are all tied into groups both throughout the Glens of Antrim and indeed some cases throughout the north of Ireland. Um, so that local knowledge and that networking was brilliant. And if I had one message, communicate. Communicate with your funder. Communicate with your local community. Communicate with your uh, wider diaspora. One of the things we're trying to do now is, because money is still tight for us, very tight. We're trying to see, is there money out there from uh, money from America, as they used to call it. So we'll see where that goes. And we're continuing to fundraise. So now we're open. How's it going? Grand. Um, cash flow, still an issue. Even when you finish the building, the bills keep coming. Uh, and at this stage, we've used up all our funding. So balancing that's quite important. Really important. Most groups will not be VAT registered when they start. Make sure you get VAT registered at a very early stage. And make sure you get monthly repayments because the funders will not generally include VAT within their funding. And if they do, then you've just lost 20%. So a minor thing, but watch the watch the watch the, the VAT. Um, really important too to have baseline. So again, what we're doing now has to be we'll have to go back and look at what we intended to do. And that's that's 18 months to two years ago now. So you need to keep revisiting your strategy, revisiting your baseline, revisiting the things that you said you're going to do. Um, don't suddenly midstream change completely what you think. You will have to tweak, you will have to change. But if your vision was right at the start, it should still be following through here. Um, difficulties we're having now, uh, we're really pleased how the building turned out. In some ways, it's a bit of a cliche, but the hard work starts now. Um, we're very much volunteer based, as I mentioned earlier. One of the things we really need is to put a lot of effort into managing the hub. We need to take a lot of effort into marketing the hub, uh, access controls, how do we do that? How do we ensure that we continue to liaise and engage with our local community? And we're struggling with that a little bit. On a voluntary basis, we're all very, very busy people. Um, even people like me who are in theory retired, I'm still involved in a lot of things. Some of our members can only offer very little. So I think the one thing where we think there could be a bit more assistance is a bit more assistance afterwards for facilitation, for I'm not looking for a full-time manager. I think that's probably a bit of an ambitious one, but some people to help to take on some of the burden that a voluntary committee has to has to work with. Um, the other, we do have very ambitious plans for a phase two, which will double the size of this site. Um, and again, we actually have got funding more or less lined up for that as well. So what we want this hub to be is not simply about bums on seats, but also how can it help local businesses, local social enterprises, local community organizations, mentoring, training. We see a real USP, unique selling point for this area in terms of our maritime tradition. We've got a business here which sells boats to from Svalbard above the Arctic Circle to the Falkland Islands. We've got guys, we've got a light boat here. We've got guys who are very specialist in fishing, marine tourism industries. So we want to look at how can our hub you know, help to develop those sorts of things. Um, other slightly more mundane points, keep records because monitoring and evaluation, your funders will want to know what's happening and they are wanting to know what's happening with us. Publicity, give them their due publicity. They provided you, in most cases, with several hundred thousand pounds worth of funding. So they want uh, they want to know that you're acknowledging that. And so if you're doing banners, leaflets, events, we're continuing to run a series of activities and events, uh, open day meetings with businesses. You've got to keep all that going. It does require a fairly intensive effort. I mentioned earlier, very experienced committee, but sometimes you keep need to refresh that. The people we had in the building stage, particularly, say, the guy who's a senior construction uh, manager, you know, brilliant. But we need slightly different skills now we're running it. We need more marketing skills. Uh, we need more probably younger people involved because we need a bit more energy about the thing. Um, social media is becoming more and more important to us. So you need to sort of keep refreshing what you're actually doing uh, because at the end of the day, this will only work if people in the local community, in the local area, see it as a valuable asset, and it will only work if we're getting revenue coming in. And we're okay with that at the moment. Still a lot of work to do. 
Um, I'll maybe pause at the stage because that was probably quite a lot to digest. And I'll, I'll stop sharing, folks, if that's all right at this stage. Good. I'm happy, obviously, to take questions now or later. And again, can I, if people do want to contact me after the meeting, more than happy to do so. I will promise to get back to you straight away. It is Christmas. I have a lot of social events lined up, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I think you've put them all off a plan now, Andrew. We can just end it. We can just end the call. Exactly. Look at you. Yeah. Um, Andrew, what you were saying there about, you know, after, you know, the building, it was obviously a new uh, project for Cushendall. Um, and as part of the application, you have to um, talk about the sustainability of your pro project. Yeah. You obviously did talk about that and also what you were talking about there about the marketing skills of young people. You know, that's, I suppose, under succession planning when it comes to the governments of your or, governments of your organisation. So are you finding you're obviously one year on, two year on? I know that the, the centre is only really open in September, so it's okay. not open that long. Obviously, the building work started at the end of last year, but um, the building's only opened in September. So are you finding much has changed from what you put in your actual plan to the reality? Um, well, actually, not really. Um, in terms of sustainability, this was a difficult one. There's very limited amount we can do with a building. This is a big concrete bunker. Um, yeah. which actually that's not a disadvantage in some ways um, because it's actually well insulated in that sense um, and it also in many ways to knock this building down or to try and utilize it for something else the energy that you would require for that because it's pure concrete would have been enormous so there's, there's quite a sustainability bit there we would probably didn't push hard enough for maybe some staffing resource that's the only thing where we maybe underestimated the amount of work afterwards. Um, we we used the uh, revenue, which was incredibly useful uh, to bring in a project manager and for architectural to start. And we were really lucky, got a cracker. I mean, we came in slightly under budget, which is nearly unheard of in a community project. Um, and also we had an architect who, who worked with us. So that was really useful. But yeah, we probably were struggling a bit with the resource at the moment. Now, it's not that we haven't got the activity, but we can only sustain this as a voluntary group for a certain length of time. And if we want to make phase one a success to ensure that phase two comes along as a further success, we're going to have to try and bring in some more resource. We may do that through private funding, but that's the one area where, yes, maybe we didn't get 100% right. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Laurie, I know you've shared a fair bit. Sorry, before I go on to you, Laurie, anybody else want to ask any questions of, of Andrew? No, great project. You've done a brilliant job getting it to where it is and uh, such a turnaround for the for the, for the building. Mm, marvelous. Real, fla real flagship project in, in Cushendall. Well worth, well worth a visit. Laurie, I know, I know you talked a bit about your project, but do you want to? Yeah. Well, happy to go. Uh, thank you, Dido, and good to hear from, you, from you, Andrew. Um, so I'm, I'm going to focus now on 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 you guys and 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 making making the decision or not of whether to submit an application in the in the in the current round or the round it's opening or in a future round. So a little bit of reinforcement from what Dido has been talking about earlier, but also some just some additional points. Guys, the first thing you have to consider and you have to be is investment ready. Okay. You can't be investment ready after you submit the application. Remember, this funder wants to give out money. So, but it wants to give out money to sure things. The things that are going to be delivered during the time that the money's been allocated for. So it wants to reduce its risk. And the way it reduces its risk in terms of making the decisions is the projects have to be investment ready. So what does that mean? The site you're, 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 you're looking to development, do you have legal title or a sufficient lease on that site? And the story about where you got the legal title or the lease is very important in terms of the storytelling. And I understand there may be some marriages of convenience being put in place in terms of one organization leasing to the other. Think about that and what it looks like to the funder or the potential funder. 
The second thing you need to have is permissions in place. So do you have plan of permission? Because the, the reality is, if you don't have the permissions in place, then you're a risk. You have to reduce the risk to be successful. Do you mention the match fund? And the match fund now is 20%. Do you have that in place? Can you show that it's in place? Have you got a bank statement that shows it's in place? Do you have another letter of offer that shows it's in place? Do you have the match fund? Fourth thing I want to mention is the delivery time. You've got a period, if you're successful, you've got a period to deliver this. This is UK Treasury money. Money has to be spent within a time frame. The fifth thing I want to mention is incorporation. Are you an incorporated body? If you're not, then you're not going to be successful. Round peg, square hole. These are fundamentals. Another one I just want to reinforce Deirdre's point is about governance. Is your governance strong? Because that is being assessed. Not only is your government, the governance strong now, and you have to tell the story of how it's strong, but also how is the governance be going, to, going to look like in the future? If, for instance, you know somebody wants to assess your governance, they might look back over company accounts or charity commission reports says all of a sudden the same people have been in the same positions in your organization for 10 15 years you have to tell a story of governance is it strong do you have the right people around the table and will you have the right people around the table in the future and another really really important is how your project fits in to the wider environment to your village to your town to your city to your rural community how does it fit in with things like the local authorities community plan or other plans that are existing in the area? Is it is there a village plan in place? Is there a neighborhood renewal plan in place? How does depend on where you are? How does your project fit in? Because that's important in terms of the storytelling. So the community audit. Is the need there? Does the audit evidence the need? How do you do an audit? Well, there's many ways to do an audit. One of the best ways to do an audit increasingly and quickly is online. You can collect an awful lot of information and collect it very, very quickly online. The, this, this slide shows the Lock Melvin Holiday Centre, or what was the Lock Melvin Holiday Centre in Garrison and County Fermanagh. And the Lock Melvin Holiday Centre was a local authority creation in the 80s by Fermanagh District Council, which is now subsequently Fermanagh Lumber District Council. The building then subsequently was leased out and was leased out on a number of occasions over the years to, um, first of all, the community-based organisation and su uh, subsequently to the private sector. Ultimately, the asset wasn't working and it became empty and increasingly became derelict. It became a loose, a, a loose around the local authorities uh, you know, they didn't want it, and so they tried to, to put it out onto the market. And it, uh, eventually, the local community stepped in. The local community believed that there was a need for this very important uh, site in their village to be redeveloped for community purposes. There was a clear need identified through the community audit, through letters of support, etc that the need existed and they were able to quantify the need. Really, really important. It fitted in with the, the community plans, the village plans and other things. So they were able to set the project in terms of the wider, the wider needs uh, and wider plans. They were able to produce to the audit, the clear evidence of demand the letters of support, really, really important. And remember this, everybody, this is a UK government fund. Some would say it's a political fund. In the context of Northern Ireland, I'm not sure whether it is a political fund or not, though you'll see the, the decision last month not to withhold money on, on a different part of the, the levelling up agenda monies, which, didn't, which weren't announced. But in this case, wherever you are, 
I would encourage you to get a lot of support from your, from your MP, no, no matter what political party that MP is from, get a lot of support for, from your MP, get a lot of support from your MLS, get a lot of support from your local authority, but equally important, get a lot of support from your community, from other community-based organizations and other key players in the community. That's a body of evidence which says, we believe in these people, we believe in what they're doing. And if you can get those letters of support politically, politically from different political parties that may have MLAs uh, from your area or MP from your area, that's really, really important because it can show. Um, so the more of you do, the more evidence you have of support, the better. And the other thing the funders fear is this issue of displacement. Are we wasting money to displace what already exists or partly what already exists in the area in which this project's being developed? And whether that's the public sector or private sector, are you, because, and it doesn't take long, guys, even though the decisions are being made ultimately in, in, in London, it, you know, a little bit of research by whoever's assessing will tell if there's a gym in your village or will tell if there's a community hub space in your village and you're doing another community hub space. So, like, you know, make sure that displacement isn't, isn't going to take place here. Um, because if it's seen that there'd be potential displacement, well, you know, it causes the question whether uh, you're likely to be successful here. Just go to the next slide. Very important, you do mention there's only two places to upload additional information in your application, in the application online form. But in those two places and in the application form itself, if there's an opportunity to tell the story about this asset or what was once an asset or could be an asset to be developed, you need to use the opportunity to tell the story. Okay, so... The, the storytelling coming from the letters of support, the storytelling from the business plan about the viability of the project, or the storytelling about where, how the project's fall in, in the disrepair and depend on, on the particular initiative you have and how the renovations are, are needed. Images, if you can, you don't be a place in the application form, but in the company documentation, you may be able to find an opportunity to put images, et cetera. If the fact is the document, you know, the, it has to be a JPEG, it can't be too big. So you might need a little bit of support in terms of pulling that document together within the, the width that you're able to submit. But if storytelling is really important here, guys, and how the asset or what was once an asset is no longer an asset, and how it can once again become an asset. Just go on to the next slide, please. Okay, the business plan. So you've got your community audit, your business plan, your application form. Those are the key documents. The business plan does not need to be a thesis. You're not writing a postgraduate master's thesis. You're telling the story within the business plan of how this project is viable. If you're applying for revenue funding in the first year to get the project up and running, you need to build that revenue funding into your business plan. Okay, it can't be something extra. So year one, if you're applying for revenue funding of up to 50,000 pounds from the community ownership fund, you need to build that into your business plan in terms of income and expenditure. It can't be alien or different from and if you're getting that money in, it could be, for example, Andrew mentioned his experience, you know, you could be bringing someone to oversee the project, the management of the delivery of the capital phase. Or it could be, for instance, on things like uh, to get your marketing in place, you know, your, your, uh, for immediately when you open. But you need to build that into your business plan. The other thing, I'm going to very, very important here is the application form. Theodore mentioned putting it on Word, compiling all your answers on your computer or whoever is within your within your group, 
is taking this key lead on the application form. Hopefully others are feeding into the application form, but one person should be taking the lead in terms of uh, you go, you can use share drive or other things where people can 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 help if, if you've got a strong group. But the application form is challenging. You've got when you open up the application form online, you've got 24 hours to some complete the application. So if you, you need to have it on Word, saved on your computer, and then start pulling, pulling the answers across onto the online form. I can't stress that enough because it's it's quite a challenge to if you just start, you can't really start from scratch completing the application form online. The, the amount of detail you need to have that already saved, worked on over, over the previous weeks in order then to pull the information across. It is time limited. Let's go on to the next slide. And having having the two supporting documents, the business plan and the community audit, to, to go on to ready as well. Those are your key the, the application form, having that in Word, hopefully. You've got all the answers prepared, pull them across, and then your two supporting documentation, the business plan, pull that across, and the community audit. Next slide, please, Margaret. So make sure you have and maximize the business plan and the audit and what the storytelling is within that. Who is going to do this? Guys, I'm not great at IT. Okay. So my experience on, on this type of thing is if you're not the best person in the organization, find who is in order to complete the online form. It, does, it can be, for, for those who aren't, particularly ICT savvy, it can be a little bit tricky. For those who, who are ICT savvy, it's probably as easy as, as putting uh, milk on your Weetabix. But it's important you get that right. Time limited application form, once you open the form, you've got a certain amount of time to submit it and make sure you have access, whoever's doing this, to the other information that's being uploaded. Final slide. Guys, volunteer time. If you're going to make this application, submit, prepare and submit an application, you want it to be successful. You're going to put in a huge amount of hours to prepare the three key elements of the application, the form itself and the answers to all of the questions, the business plan and getting that right, the community audit, and everything that goes beyond that, behind that, the letters of support, convening the community, uh, making sure that the, the uh, investment ready, you've got everything ready to go, you're ready to go. The volunteer time in doing this is significant. So, Make sure you have the capacity within the time frame. If you don't have the capacity to complete what's saved in the next round, 31st of January, then make sure you prepare now for the March, April round, because this takes time and your time is precious. Please, please, please do not think that you're going to squeeze the round peg in the square hole. Or the square hole in the round peg. You know, it, it's it's this takes time, and the experience we've had working with our colleagues down in, in Garrison and with another group in Fermanagh, we're waiting on news from is this is this is tough. This is a tough, uh, very rewarding, as Andrew said. When when if you get it right and you get over the line, but this is competitive and it's tough. And so the final thing in, in light of that, I'm going to say is. Make sure the decision of whether to proceed is considered. Considered by the group and the members of the group and the members of the group who are going to ultimately have to put in the work. Because it's easy to say, oh, we should go for this. But it's easy for somebody to say that. But to deliver on this takes time. And unless you think there's a very, very good chance that you're going to be successful, that you are investment ready, that you have the capacity to deliver on a strong application, a good, strong community message audit, 
a strong business plan, that the project is viable, it stacks up, then I consider that maybe if you, unless you are convinced that you have all those things in place, then maybe this fund is not for you. I hope that's been useful. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Any questions for Laurie? Laurie, I'll just pick up on the time element. I know you have been one of the, well, you've been an associate on two projects for DTNI. Um, roughly from start to finish, time-wise, how long do you reckon it would take a group to complete that whole process? I know some groups are further on than others and they have a lot of information, but somebody who maybe has a business plan that was written for another purpose, maybe for a council fund or for another fund, um, what, what in your estimation would be a good timeline? I, I, everything depends on the capacity of, of the governance of the people around the table. Yeah. Uh, it, and, and it depends on that capacity or your ability to bring in somebody else to, to, to do various elements. So, you know, uh, uh, do you have a business plan? If you have a business plan, is it a suitable business plan? Is the business plan three years out of date? Is it, you know, um, if it's three years out of date, you know, costs have gone, as we all know, costs have gone significantly through the roof. Then is that business plan realistic? I, it's very difficult to say. Um, I I think you know if you've got a strong group like Andrew's got a strong group. Andrew, you guys are you know strong, but you also brought in expertise with Deirdre and others to help you with with the process. Uh, the you know uh, the case in, in in the Garrison case, there was you know there was a great account. <laughs> Who really could work on the business plan and, and and took the lead on that? There was uh, some really good people in, in with knowledge of buildings and construction, and things like environmental sustainability, and were able to to, to take that element and 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 then you know there was people on the community side who were able to animate and encourage people to complete the online uh, questionnaires. Others, another member of the group, went off and said, "Right, let us support." I need to get these 20 in from X, Y, and Z. So I think it's about the division of labor, Margaret, and the capacity, uh, then to pull it together, um, you know, that uh, you really need somebody who's, who's got the time to, to submit the application, upload it, submit it. So I think it depends on the, 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 the governance within the group, the ability to draw upon other resources, whether that's DTNI or or or, or other resources that you may have in terms of uh, people to help with the business plan or people to help with the community audit. Some people might have a, a rural network that they can draw upon to help with maybe the community audit process. Some people are working through uh, what they call community support offices and councils. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's sitting down, in terms of that very last point I made, decision to make, take your time. I think what you have to do is sit down and say, right, these are the things which, which would, first of all, do we suit the project? Do we suit the fund? If we suit the fund and it's clear we suit the fund, then these are the steps we need to take. Who can take those steps and when can they take those steps over the period of time? And whether that's, if if you all make one step, we are, we this fund is for us. Now, I always encourage groups to go as early as possible in an application process because ultimately the money is going to run out somewhere down the road. And as the as a recent fund within the lottery, the Dormant Accounts Fund showed that once it comes to the D Day, i.e. the last round, then that's when the greatest demand is on the resource. So the earlier you can get in your funding application, the less competitive it usually is. Uh, that's not to say it's not competitive. It really is competitive, but it gets even more competitive. So the, the earlier you can go, the more you kick the, this can down the road, the more difficult it's going to be, from my experience over many years of, of funding rounds. So it's really horses for courses, I think, Margaret, and 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 also saying you know sitting down with the, the the group, the governance of the group, sitting down and say, okay, what do we have? What do we need to get? Who can get that? Who can pull that together? How can we pull it together? And 
put the timeline to it with it within that and the experience from Garrison and also to refer the experience of the other project we're, which we're hoping hoping on good news later on this month from is that division of 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 tasks the division of labor amongst both the, the the volunteer group and also other support that they're able to draw upon is vital to get up this you know community ownership fund over the line okay brilliant thank you and I'm assuming that's your experience as well with grow the glens when you were pulling your application together, yeah. Right, sorry. Yeah, I mean, the experience that Laurie's outlined there, very, very similar to yourselves. It's, in terms of timing, I mean, to be realistic, it probably took us two years to get where we are. And I was fascinated by the first point, uh, the point that Laurie made at the end there. We were the first in, and I'll guarantee it was easier for us. There was less competition, there was more flexibility. And to be very honest, um, COF were at, at a stage they were learning um, and at one stage actually I was actually advising them on how to put their application form together I thought because it was too easy in my opinion which is something I've never said to anybody in my life so I'm probably responsible for the fact that it didn't get any easier but no absolutely uh, and COF are a good organisation to work with and again lift the phone I mean lift the phone before the application lift the phone during the application not much point lifting the phone after it's in, but that communication element, really, really important. The points that, that Laurie made there, yeah, I agree with every single one of them. That's just, it's like, I suppose when you were at school, read the question, what are they asking you? Answer the question, not, not don't answer what you think they want to hear, answer what they say they want to hear. So I think that really is a key. And the delegation of duties, that was one of the, one of the joys of the group I'm working with at the moment was we had great delegation. We couldn't have put a successful application together. I was good at the application writing. Other people were good at the business side. Other people were good at the, the survey side and community engagement. So that, that's that's absolutely crucial. You've got to have a strong group to have one of these applications. The other point maybe I should make as well is, in most cases, the COF grant will not be enough to do the project that you're undertaking. So you, you are going to be having probably maybe one, two, maybe three other funding applications, plus some private applications going on as well, you know, private fundraising. So you've got to take that all, all on board. It's a great it's a great fund, but by itself, it's probably not enough. So that's a further sort of bit of energy needed for all those things. And it's great to have the likes of the Fermanagh Trust or an early area, the community networks um, and DTNI. Use whoever you can get your hands on. Uh, to actually help you because it is it is a difficult to say I thought it wasn't a bad process but that's someone who's been doing this for 30 years I suspect others might find it a bit more difficult but yeah it's well worth applying for but don't go into it as Laurie says unless you're ready. Okay 